I'm Ruben Martin. I'm a group leader of the Institute of Chemical Research of Catalonia and the research of my group is primarily focused on the development of catalytic strategies for the activation of inert molecular bonds and in particular inert molecular entities, for example carbon dioxide. Well, I'm organic chemist by training and uh, what happens whenever you are organic chemist is that you are all the time fascinated about the way of assembling molecules and in particular about the creation of new methods that can build up molecular complexity. And as global demand and prices for petroleum-based um, feedstocks continue to rise, chemists like us and like any other, any other one here at the Institute is being challenged like to devise processes that utilize biomass-derived feedstocks, for example, carbon dioxide. And indeed, an, um, an increased utilization of carbon dioxide would be highly desirable in synthesis and in many other disciplines as well because carbon dioxide is a tremendously abundant, it's very inexpensive, and probably we're dealing with the most uh, green source of carbon in nature. So indeed, we have to look at photosynthesis, for example. So photosynthesis is the way algae, plants, and bacteria convert CO2 into carbohydrates. And we are doing nothing else but mimicking nature. So therefore, an increased utilization of CO2 would follow the principles of sustainability. And not surprisingly, industry has been looking at the ways of capturing CO2 and making molecules out of this. For example, we have the synthesis of ureas, the synthesis of methanol, or for example, the synthesis of polycarbonates. But this situation is far from being ideal because we have a lot of CO2 being accumulated in the atmosphere because we do generate a lot of CO2. For example, combustion of fossil fuels, uh, fermentation and living organisms itself because we as human beings we generate about a kilo of CO2 per day and per person. So at least in my perspective we still need to develop catalytic methods that capture CO2 and make a better use of carbon and energy. Okay? So and my group in particular has been very much focused on the synthesis of carboxylic acids. It's a molecule <coughs> that despite its simplicity, carboxylic acids are tremendously prevalent in many pharmaceutical drugs. Indeed, it would be almost inconceivable to imagine an advanced drug that does not possess a carboxylic acid or a carboxylic acid motif. And although there are many ways of doing carboxylic acids, and obviously industry has a way of achieving this goal, the problem is that none of the methods utilized use carbon dioxide. And my group has been focused on that direction trying to come up with a new and innovative way of doing carboxylic acids from simple CO2. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we do here. So we work with CO2 and so basically what we're doing is capturing CO2 from an atmosphere in, and put it into organic molecules. And to do so, we are using this kind of, of CO2 lines, which are very similar to Schlang lines. So basically it's like we have two inlets. One is direct to a pump, which is making vacuum and the other one is connected to a big cylinder so we can insert CO2 here. So usually we do these reactions in Schlang tubes that's because we don't want CO2 to be released overnight or whatever. So we connect this Schlang tube into a line and we have to first like put some vacuum here. We open it and now it's under vacuum. Once you leave it like for a while then you just put the CO2 in and we, we repeat this action like three, four times to make sure that the whole atmosphere is CO2. And then once we've done this like a few times, we just have, well, we, we have all the starting materials here before. So we just need to put the solvent in a, under like a CO2 atmosphere. So like this, you just open it quickly. Once the solvent is in, we close it make sure it's completely closed and then the reaction is done. And once the reaction is here, we just put it and put it here and warm it. And just to let you know, for example, last year in 2013, we just came up with a solution <coughs> for the synthesis of phenyl acetic acids. It's a molecule that are tremendously prevalent in many antibiotics, for example, in the case of having a 
vancomycin, probably is the main antibiotic that's being used nowadays and in pharma. And another uh, important motive of phenylacetic acids is the, the fact that these motifs are tremendously prevalent in compounds for crop protection. And indeed, there are many ways of doing phenylacetic acid, but none of them use CO2 so far. And if something I learned from my previous advisor as a student is that whenever we develop a method, the method should be robust, should be reliable, should be operationally simple, user-friendly, and none of the reagents utilized should be air insensitive. And challenged by the perception of my previous advisor, which just came up with a solution for the synthesis of these phenylacetic acids, is a publication we reported in 2013. It is a method that utilizes very simple catalyst, cheap, that is able to capture CO2 only with atmospheric pressure of CO2 at only room temperature. So it's a, it's a very powerful method and we truly hope to come up with a better solution for capturing CO2 and making carboxylic acids in a different backbones. And probably in the long, in the long, long future, I would like to develop what uh, I call my dream in CO2 chemistry, that it's uh, the possibility of doing a catalytic artificial photosynthesis by capturing CO2 with sunlight and trying to make carboxylic acids out of it. But this is a dream. And probably this is something that uh, it's going to take a little bit of, uh, of time, but I truly trust and uh, my group is an incredible group of people that I'm sure that they will be successful, no doubt about it.